Hello, this is Kevin Holbrook from CAD Dimensions. In the rollout this year, Jesse and I created some tips and tricks that we presented to our user base, and I wanted to record those so every one of our customers and others around the world could take a look. So let's get started. If we take a look at uh, this drawing, and all my tips and tricks are drawing related, the first thing I think about is this area of the software. The area that is custom properties. Now, custom properties um, typically start out like this. They're blank. You've got to fill out properties like part number, description, and all that information that you put in there. The intention is either to go to a bill of material or go to a, a title block. Now, the first property I'm going to put in here is for a watermark. Now, that watermark uh, is going to be used on the sheet format to sit behind the geometry. Now, some of you may not know how to do that properly, so this first tip is to show you how. First thing you want to do is go into Edit Sheet Format. In there, you're going to go ahead and add a note. Okay, That note can sit right in the middle of the page for now. A um, couple of things we want to do with this note is we want to first link it to the property that we filled out. Now that property can be linked using a button in the property manager called link to property. Uh, we'll go ahead and select current document and uh, we should be able to find the watermark property that we saw before. Now obviously this isn't going to be uh, sufficient enough to have it this small in this color. So I'll go ahead and just highlight that and we'll make that uh, some value that's uh, a bit bigger in this case. Also, I want to rotate this a little bit. Um, in order to do that, you just go over, uh, select the note, go over, make sure use document font is turned off. And if that's the case, we can go ahead and just do a little bit of a rotation uh, here. Now, if I exit back out to the sheet, you'll notice that this is the first uh, issue that most run into when they're trying to create a watermark is it ends up being on top of the geometry so you have kind of this issue that it's going to uh, inhibit the user from getting access to things like dimensions because you got a note that's kind of sitting right on top however if I go back into edit sheet format a couple things that I'm able to do first of all I probably want to change the color uh, to something a little bit lighter that kind of shows as a light color if you print it out and the other thing we're going to do is an option called behind sheet. Behind sheet is the missing piece here because when I use behind sheet and I go back to the sheet itself, you can see that that now sits behind the geometry. If there's dimensions, there's notes, um, we can go ahead and make sure that that's sitting behind it when you print it out. You see everything you need uh, that's intended to be on the drawing and this, this is ended. Uh, intended to be uh, kind of uh, an idea of where in the process it might be. <clears throat> now I talked about the custom properties and in a lot of cases you're filling out the custom properties to get them into the title block. Now if I go into the sheet format the first thing I probably think about is that these notes that sit on the title block well what if I just filled them out uh, in the title block themselves, which is what a lot of you are doing. You're filling out your your notes manually, either in your title block or elsewhere. Well, the first thing I would think and hope would happen is it would go to the custom properties and actually put the the property in here. I, I filled out drawn by, but it doesn't exist here. So how can I make it so when I fill out the note on the sheet format that it shows up in the properties? Well again, if I go under Edit Sheet Format and then right click in the graphics area, there's an option in here, it's been around for a few years, called Title Block Fields. Now Title Block Fields uh, allows you to specify the area of the drawing that is considered the title block because what it's going to do is look inside that area and find any notes that exist. Those notes can now be selected in the order that you want them filled out in the title block. Now you'll notice also as I'm making these selections off to the left in the property manager there's a spot to put tool tips okay and we can control the order manually in here as well. Now it doesn't look like much when I exit back out to the sheet 
honestly, you see it acts as if nothing has occurred here. But watch as I mouse over the title block. You can kind of see the red border that I specified, uh, and, and my cursor changes a little bit. What that allows me to do is if I double click on the title block, all the notes that I specified as title block notes now become valid. Now I can come in here and put in information, and I'm just going to put in some gibberish here so we can see what, what occurs. Okay, by putting this data in, I've now pushed all that data into the file properties. So it makes it real easy to take what you do in the title block and make it useful elsewhere because you're going to use these other fields in things like PDM or bill of materials or link notes on drawings. So you want to make sure they're in both spots. Now, have you ever tried to put a uh, dimension on an isometric view? Well, if you have, you probably get just as confused as I do. I go to select two edges of geometry and I have no idea what I'm getting here. Uh, I really can't see how it's projected. I can't understand where it's even attached to. So how do I put real isometric dimensions on this view? Well, if you select the view itself, okay, over in the view properties is an option called dimension type. In there you'll see an option for both projected and true dimensions. When I select true dimensions, it's going to see that I have a projected dimension on there and ask me if I'm going to delete it. Now that it's deleted, now it deletes it because you can't have a projected and a true dimension in the same isometric. A true dimension gives you the true dimensional information between the two pieces of geometry projected correctly on the view itself. You can go and I'll throw a few of them on here so you can kind of get a sense of what we're talking about here. So if you've ever wanted to dimension an isometric metric the correct way, uh, this is the way to do it. Now the next tip I have uh, is related to auxiliary views. Now auxiliary views uh, are really nice. The problem with an auxiliary view is once you add them to the drawing, they're always at a weird angle and you, you watch people look at an auxiliary view, they kind of rotate their head either to view the drawing in a certain way because the auxiliary is rotated. So let's go ahead and add an auxiliary view here. I'm just going to use the edge of the model and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Uh, I have a view that's at this angle and I'm kind of tilting my head to, to view it properly. If I put a bunch of dimensions on there, they're all tilted. One of the things you may not know, if you right click on the view itself, there's an option to align the drawing view. And you can align the drawing view uh, by rotating it to align horizontally um, by rotating the model clockwise or counterclockwise. Now this doesn't make any sense unless we know how much we've rotated it and the system will automatically put the rotation value in there. So 13 and a half degrees is what that angle is. Now you can dimension this. You've got a good idea and an annotation uh, knowing exactly what's intended there. Next tip, another one I, I had no clue existed. I don't even know how I stumbled upon it here. But in break view, uh, one of the things that uh, is the most uh, annoying with a break view is you can never get the break lines to stay where you want. Now I could break this particular view and I can control the location but if I change any of the uh, parts or anything in the assembly the break lines aren't where I would intend them to be. What you can do however that you may not know is dimension to a break line. So let's say I wanted to always show two and a half inches on that end two and a half inches on this end. Now what will happen is that will always maintain that distance from the end regardless of the length of the particular model. Now the first thing you're thinking about is I really don't want these dimensions on my drawing. Well you'll notice as I hit escape and as soon as I exit out of the break view 
it disappears those dimensions so I don't even have to deal with them. To get them back I just click on the brake line and I can go ahead and make adjustments uh, if need be to the dimensions. Make it very easy to position and locate those dimensions. Okay. Now I do have a two sheet drawing here and I started to detail out one of the parts in the second sheet. And if you've ever done this where you've brought in dimensions from the part model, you'll notice that uh, sometimes they don't quite come in the way you expect. Well, why does that happen? Well, when I do an insert model items, at the bottom of the insert model items dialog is an option to use the dimension placement in the sketch. Now, when I use dimension placement in sketch, it's essentially using the locations where you place the dimension while you were modeling the part. And it's not very common for me, anyway, to think about the position of a dimension when I'm placing it in sketch mode. So, what do I do after I've brought these in and I want to reorganize them? I've already use the dimension placement from the sketch. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and just select all the dimensions and in the dimension pop-up, there's a bunch of alignment tools at the bottom that you may not know about. I can align horizontal or vertical or right or left, but the one I wanna show you here is on the left-hand side, it's called auto arrange dimensions. When I select this, it's going to arrange the dimensions outside the extents of the geometry and position it some distance away from the, the edges as well as each other. Now how that's determined is in the tools options under document properties, dimensions, there's an area called offset distances. Now to illustrate how this works, I'm just gonna go ahead and change the offset distance and select a few dimensions here. I can go back and tell it to rearrange or auto arrange again and you can see it's now using the new spacing. So there's two spaces that you place in the uh, distance dialog there and that's one from the distance of the model and the other is the distance between dimensions. So that's a, a nice way to organize dimensions that you have. Now my last tip here has to do with placing other things on a drawing view. Uh, that are really associated, for instance, a note that I want some distance away from this view. The problem we typically have is once you move the view, I have to move everything else to, to reposition it around the view. Here's an example. If I go ahead and uh, take a note here and I drag it out onto the view, this is what you expect. The, the view, oh, I'm sorry, these are connected you wouldn't expect these two to be attached to each other. Now one way to do that is to execute a command called lock view focus. Now mine was on already, but if you right click here, you have an option lock the view focus. Now what this does is you'll notice the border of the view here. If I lock the view focus, you can see that the border changes. I now have these kind of corner posts on here that are a different color. What that does is every note that's dragged in is now associated with that view and as you saw before with mine on, it moves right along with it. Now let me turn off lock view focus and show you what the alternative is. If I double click on the sheet, that will turn off lock view focus and I can drag another note in here. Now watch the difference between how these two notes react. One is associated with the view, the other is not. Now what if I wanted to disassociate or associate something that I hadn't before? Well, if I take this particular note and I right click, you're gonna find an option to attach uh, and attach to view. All you have to do is select the view you wanna to attach to and now this note is attached to that view. If I wanted to disconnect, I could right click on one, say attachment, and say attach to sheet. And now I've just reversed what we had before. So hopefully you like these tips and tricks. We presented these at the 2018 rollout. Hope uh, we see you next year when we show a few more. Thanks. 
don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below. 